The weakness of the familiar is a curse of stagnancy. Now, when these words came to me, it was in reflection to my current circumstance and situation and in the fear of moving forward and how my change in either direction or my perceptive observation of making a change for myself can impact me in ways that I can't see. Maybe I can feel a little, but I have an understanding that it's a shift that I have been hesitating on making for a long time, but I've been purposely staying stagnant because of the familiarity of what I am moving away from and walking away from in every aspect of my life. This past week's focus on wellness really was distracted or kind of derailed by, again, all the outside things that I'm dealing with in stabilizing my foundation and securing myself because I didn't really feel the need to to do that. I felt that everything would happen whether I did anything or not, but I was reminded by a conversation with someone that You know, I have to stop playing small and step into the role that I have asked for for myself. And to be well in one area does not mean to suffer um, in another. So I have to bring balance to all areas of my life in wellness and creating a space to have that wellness, whether it's physical, mental, emotional or otherwise, it's my responsibility to do so. So staying in an environment, staying in an environment where I don't feel that my wellness is being nurtured or staying in any type of situation, familial or otherwise, where I do not feel the balance of that, that wellness, it only defeats the purpose that is on my life that's greater than what I can even see or, or overstand or understand. You know, I am learning constantly how that changes for me week by week, day by day, moment by moment, that everything that I perceived one way is not that way. And I have to be okay with that. Um, But the one main thing is I have control over how I choose to manifest the things that I'm passionate about in my life, my lifestyle, my wellness, the things that are important to me to remain whole or to get whole. And I'm by no means perfect. I do not claim in any way to be that. I'm far from it. But I don't wear everything that I'm dealing with outwardly because it's for me to face. Um, It's my journey. It's my struggle. And having been in a space where people have weaponized my challenges against me, I've made the, you know, active decision intentionally to just share what I know can be helpful to others in transforming through whatever it is that they're facing internally and externally. And with wellness, like I said, to stay in a space of stagnancy and anything that confuses your mentality is not going to create wellness. It's going to create a form of decay, a form of degradation, and you know pulling you further away from what it is that you're striving for to be whole to be well and to have the type of well-being that helps you to create um, and cultivate all of the things that we are all striving for in some way shape or form in this life outside of what others um, try to control in our life and in our experience we just have to you know again rise to the occasion, rise up to meet that situation, whatever it may be. And in this challenge of maintaining or creating wellness for myself, I have to get uncomfortable or get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I said before in previous vlogs that, you know, not hiding from what it is that I'm facing and facing it head on or, you know, making the decision to shift and move before Um, things happen so that I can navigate on my own terms and in my own way to to make the changes that I feel are best for me. And that's not always going to be accepting to others. It's not always going to even be accepting to me. But that's where 
coming out of comfort and coming out of complacency and stagnancy is important. If you don't move, you don't change. If you don't uh, move in any direction, you don't change. You remain stagnant. And that is not something that I want to bring into the new year. So I'm making those changes to cultivate wellness within myself, outside of myself, um, with some discomfort with the changes that I'm having to make. And it's okay. It has to happen in that way so that I can really embrace the wellness that I want in my life right now and not, you know, at a particular timeline or a particular um, period of time that others deem it to be, but for me right now. And I have gone through the fire within myself, outside of myself, more than I want to admit And it can be done, but to be proactive is really important to make sure that you don't stay in that space, whatever it may be. It seems more that I try to fine tune and automate and prepare everything for um, just for a better flow for my life. And experience is the more that, you know, life reminds me that it's organic. It's not so much robotic and that there are things that I cannot automate. There are things that I cannot, um, you know, pre-plan that are going to have to be included in my experience in my life that are going to be, you know, in their own way, transparent, transformative, organic And that's where, you know, I can see the trueness of the lifestyle that I want to create for myself outside of any material gain, outside of anything that, you know, I may tell myself I want or need. You know, I've been looking a lot lately into, you know, visually stimulating my mind with a lot of material things that, yeah, they're great. It's wonderful to say that we're striving for, um, you know, a material aspect of living, but we're so much more than that. And just thinking that we already have everything that we need and those things that we desire in some way can come to us. But it's truly, if that is a desire of our heart and truly the desire of, um, you know, who we are saying that we are right now, not the person that we go on social media and say, you know, this is who I am. And, you know, I'm I'm this boss and I'm that boss. Um, We are so bogged down with titles and labels. Everybody wants to. You know, live a luxurious lifestyle. And what does luxury even mean? What is the aspect of luxury that, you know, we're calling into our lives? And is it a form of luxury that we are striving for based on, you know, healing ancestral wounds of lack, healing ancestral wounds of not having enough in some way, shape or form? So lifestyle is so, um, you know, it's incomparable. It is something that is immeasurable. It's anything that we want it to be. And at the same time, we are creators of our own pathway so we can create and cultivate a lifestyle that doesn't have to look a certain way that society says it needs to. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, based on who you are personally or the persona that you identify with or have identified with, you can change. You can say, you know, yeah, I want that. Or I'm striving for that. Or let the the work and vibration of what you are developing yourself to be, you know, draw that to you. Because I'm realizing that more now that I can, again, set up everything and have a home that is, you know, with all the comforts and the things that I want to see. Create a manifestation journal, create a vision board with you know, yachts and all these different things. And again, it's still not be a part of my identity, a part of my, you know, creative force, a creative source. That's not necessarily who I'm meant to be, but that still doesn't mean that I'm not deserving of it or that I don't want it. It's just not in the forefront of my mind or in the minds of a lot of people who continue to shift their consciousness away from material gain material um, aspirations because we can all get everything that we say we want and you know we can all you know glorify those things once we have them and still be unfulfilled 
still have a spirit of lack within us once we have attained a certain level of material luxury and wealth and still be miserable. (laughs) So I just look at it all like it's fleeting. We can have it one moment and then it's gone the next. And what is that in between lifestyle that I want to cultivate that will be consistent during any period of, of, of much or of little? You know, what is the lifestyle that I want to have be a consistent reminder of always having everything that I want, everything that I need outside of what my eyes can see and be fulfilled with? So this new year cycle, you know, begins for many of us who are entrepreneurs, who are creatives, who are, you know, heads of companies, just those striving to, you know, get their hustle on and to really capitalize on the skills that they have and to really make it this year. You know, everybody's saying 2024 is the year and we're all going to make it and we're all going to manifest great things within us. Well, we have to plan to do that. And it doesn't always have to do, again, I keep going back to, it doesn't always have to do with being so organized and structured in our planning, but it's getting those intentions on paper, writing them down so that you can visualize them and see them for what they are to you. And that's pretty much who it matters to most. Our plans are not things that we really have to share with others. We can help others like I'm doing to support other people and getting clear on writing things down that they do for themselves every day just to help them to be better at navigating who they are as people, who they are as individuals outside of the roles and responsibilities that we all have to something or someone or some, um, you know, environment experience, role, responsibility, job choice, career, anything. Um, So, you know, planning for all that, you know, include yourself in the plan of all that, you know, include what it is that you want to see for yourself in your plans. Um, And I think that's for me, that's been something that I've I've missed. I've missed the mark on that in writing down all of the intentions that I had for myself and what I wanted to see. It's just writing it down like it's a blueprint because you hear in every training and every course that I've probably ever taken, it's, you know, what, what does your dream life look like? And you write down or you intentionalize what it is that you see, you know, plan out your day. How is your day going to flow? How are you going to um, draw all of the the so-called wealth or the so-called abundance that you want to have in your life? And I wrote it like I was writing a story, but I never really pictured or visualized myself in it because I didn't know the person that I would be at the time I would receive those plans. And I think that's something that's that's also eye opening. You know, we make plans when we're probably in our 20s and our 30s of how we want our lives to be. And then we change along the way. Um, Our plans might say the same, but we change along the way and we have to continue to shift our perspective on those plans and maybe even revise those plans as we go along to have it make sense to us where we are when actually the plans start to manifest or be realized or visualized in our experience without our our doing, without our um, having any type of hands in the process because we've already laid the foundation, whether it was through trial and error, whether it's through a lot of different experiences that led us to getting to that point to have that even be a part of the plan so it's just saying planning we all can plan ahead i am you know all for it i'm all for making sure you write down your goals intentions your visions everything and bring yourself along with it but also bring the self that you are when you are expecting to receive it because we are all thinking forwardly you know, make our plans uh, for the next year, the next 12 months. And who are we going to be tomorrow? Who are we going to be in a week? Who are we going to be in a month, you know, three months from now and so on? It's important to kind of make that um, a part of the process, a part of the planning that you're doing. And I'm doing that for myself as well. 